cancer stage four and he made a post tonight that he haven't eaten in over a month and he can't swallow and i know what the i don't know what it feel like because i'm stage two colon cancer and um today i've been in the bed all day basically in the bed all day like literally in the bed you know and monday i have chemo but um i just like to mention a few things you know in support of what I do in hip hop. And like I said, I know my brother uh, Chauncey from Black Street is on here. And I also like to give out support to, uh, and I'm gonna tag everybody in this post. Mike's got the baby going on. I'm gonna tag everybody in this post that's important to me and what I do in hip hop, like Hip Hop Fundamentals, Sha Rock, that's on Rock the Bells with LL Cool J, her and Grandmaster Kaz, uh, Rock the Bells Radio. Uh, Scorpio from the Furious Five. He's working diligently. This new show will start in January on Rock the Bells International Hip Hop. Uh, the Universal Hip Hop Museum is something that I also uh, very much invested my time in. It's something that we all need to do. But tonight, I have a, he, he's, listen, he has the kid and we all gonna let it go. We, we know how the babies are. Yeah, she's killing me. 
<laughs> but Come tonight, here. tonight. Oh, and before I get into this, my brother, DJ K Slay, is dropping 200 MCs. Hey, sweetie. He's dropping 200 MCs uh, sometime this month. And my brother, right here, will be on there, along with Snoop Dogg, Sharp Rock, DMC, Run, Scarface, Kane, uh, Positive K. It's like eight bars. My brother, yeah. Chucky Chuck. My brother, Chucky Chuck. From Harlem, but live in Lawton. He was in mathematical fours online here as well. Yeah. But tonight, brothers and sisters, y'all have to excuse me because I'm learning how to stop itching from the chemo that got me going on. I like to say uh, in hip hop, we have many areas in, in this genre that I've been around since 1977. And I always give love to everybody in every borough whether you're from Brooklyn, Queens, Harlem, Jersey, Manhattan, Long Island, it don't matter. And I'm from the Bronx. Right. And I like to say this young brother here uh, has been in the game, you know, there's some things that I need to ask him because I don't know everything. And, you know, I want him to answer it. He's definitely been on the grind. He's a family man. He works. It's nothing with having the job. Sometimes I'll call him like, yo, man, I'm on the plantation. But yeah, yeah. we're going to have an interesting conversation tonight. And if anybody have any questions that they want to type in the comment box, he'll see it and I'll see it. But also, I'm working on the 50th anniversary of hip hop, which would be in two years. And if anybody want to take any donations, the Cash App is up there. Dope. And um, we're working diligently on that. And i also like to congratulate my brother, Ralph McDaniel, on what we call something that's ours in hip hop video music box and Nas at Mass Appeal for putting that together. Because Ralph McDaniel also need help in digitalizing all of the analogs of video music box shows. So I'm going to put that in a, uh, a link as well to reach Ralph. But tonight, my guest is none other from the L.A. Posse out of Queens, my brother Mikey D. What's up, brother? Yo, I'm here, baby. I'm here. You know, you call, I come running, man. I appreciate that. Let me see where we're going to start. I'm going to be like this. You from originally from Queens? Absolutely. Originally? Yes. What part? Laurelton, Queens. It's like Springfield Gardens, Jamaica, Queens, Laurelton. You know, my first apartment was in Jamaica, Queens on Supton Boulevard off Arlington Terrace back right. in 1970. Wait, wait, wait. By 76, 77, I had an apartment there. That was my first apartment. All right. Yeah, my Don't my father, my father and them is from Sutton Boulevard, one eleven for Sutton. My my father, my cousins, all of them is still over there. My and pops is in heaven, but you know the family's still over there off Sutton. I had more apartment in Queens than I had in the Bronx. I never had an apartment in the Bronx. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I had a in Connecticut. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, being the fact that um, hip hop was a growing uh, phenomenon in different sections of New York City. And certain people, like my man Chucky e. Chuck from Harlem, he moved to Lawton. Yeah. You know? And uh, back in, I think, 76, 77. Yeah. When, when did you get this, the, the urge of what we call hip hop? When did it touch you? And, and, and you go ahead and take the lead and, ex and explain everything to everybody, you know? Uh -huh. Your, your 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 introduction and and start. All right. Well, well, my introduction start happened in about between I would say between seventy nine and eighty one, somewhere in between that time. My partner, um, Derek Parks, we call him D Money. He used to live in Harlem. He got a brother named Mike Action, who's older than him, and their grandmother lived next door to where I was raised by my grandmother in Laurelton. So every, every summer, they would come visit their grandmother for the summer. And because Mike Action was the older brother, he was attending all of these jams that was going on. You know what I mean? These hip hop functions. Before us in Queens, I, my generation knew what it was. So because D Money was the younger brother, he used to steal his brother's tapes, you know? So one day, we were sitting on the on the steps in front and he, he had his brother's big radio outside 
and he was playing a cassette of Kumo D versus Busy B. Harlem World. That's the show that myself, AJ, and the Harlem World crew promoted, which was the MC convention. He played that tape, and along with that was Cold Crush was on the tape, and Grandmaster Cass spit the rhyme about Yvette. Once I heard Grandmaster Kaz, Mo D, Busy B, that's what I wanted to do from that point on. It was new to my ears. It was, I was like, yo, these dudes is, is like, the music is playing, but they, they rhyming over, yo, I didn't, yo, it blew my mind, man. And ask anybody that was around us that, at that time. I went right next door after hanging out with D Money. I wrote my first rhyme. And what I did was I kind of copied off of Kaz's Yvette. I wrote a rhyme about Dawn. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dawn. Ha! Word, no, actually, it wasn't Dawn. Dawn was a record I made. I wrote a rhyme called Kim. And it was, a, it was based off of Yvette. The first person that I let hear my very first rhyme was my nana, my grandmother. And mind you, my grandmother is white was white you know what i'm saying right but she loved it and from once she gave me the green light when she showed me she loved it it was off to the races man the next day i went and, and i let d money hear the rhyme i let little b and all of my crew hear the rhyme and it was off to the races we all started forming crews and all of that mind you chucky chuck he was down with a crew called rapomatical i used to manage rapomatical let me tell you those dudes was big in logs and them dudes. And I always those. tell people between clientele brothers, exactly. Rappermatical, and the professional five, those was our three mega groups in Lawton. Coming from my era, my age group, my peers looked up to those three groups and we wanted to be like them. Rappermatical, they had the dance steps and they was like the temptations of hip hop. You know what I mean? And, and, and the crazy part about all this, and I want people to have a clear understanding, just because I'm from the Bronx, I'm fair and equal in how I have my discussions with people when it comes to hip hop, because there are a lot of people in Queens that was in the parks. There were a lot of MCs that may not have made a big impact. Like the, I'm not gonna say they made an impact in the hood. I mean, like the Albino Twins. Oh right, yeah. Right about, then you had Grandmaster Vic. Grandmaster then, Vic, like, the creator of the of the blend. And then you got the older people like King Charles. Absolutely. You got the Disco Twins. Absolutely. You got Quicksilver. Infinity and Machine. Hold on, let me finish. Quicksilver and the Super Lovers, a oh. group that I used to at one time manage. Before Kid and Play, that's, that's right. Play came from. Also, you had Divine Infinity. You Infinity. had Fight the Sound, Tony Moore. Absolutely, my people. And, and and a lot of people don't understand. Um, but yet you still have my brother, Sweetie G. Sweetie G, you. yes, sir. Then you had... Um, what's the two, the girls? The girl MC... Oh, God. Sweet Trio? No. It's oh, freaking Frack. Freaking Frack. Freaking Frack. Freaking Frack, absolutely. Ralph McDaniels. Yes, sir. Then you still had Run, DMC. Yes, yes sir. Russell Simmons. You yes, have sir. our man, Ron Miller. Ron Miller, who had Ron Miller, Ron Mill Studios. That's where I cut, me and Melly Mel cut Police Academy 6 record at. Okay. So, there's a lot of things going on in Queens. There's, it's Sweet Tea, you know, later on. But like I'm trying to say, you have, I'm talking about before records. Yeah. You know, uh, before me, Mike, and Dave started coming out there and doing Olympia Palace, y'all had Encore going on. Y'all had Laces out there in, in Long Island. But That's we still right. had the schools. I did something at Jamaica Roller Dome, which turned out to be a disaster because Fat Cat and Corley and Kilo decided to have their dispute that night in Jamaica And it Roller was Dome. right there around the corner from where they from. So, yeah, you're right. The 104th Precinct took forever to come. But Queens also stands as testament of time when it comes to hip-hop. And there was a whole story in Queens, DJs, and what happened. There was a big party in 1979 at the Jamaica Armory when Eddie Chiba, Hollywood, Reggie Wells, Flash, they all came out there, Curtis Blow, yep. along with along Dougie with Fresh, Furious, yep. So, 
as you begin sure to be part of hip hop, my, I'm gonna ask you one question. What is the LA Posse? And you from Queens? Tell me, please explain that to me and to everybody who may not know. LA stands for Laurelton. Okay. Anybody from the vicinity of Jamaica, Queens, they know. You got, you got Hollis, Hollis Crew. You got, you got. You got these nicknames for for each one of these. Eric Cambria had a nickname. Um, Hollis had a nickname. Laurelton, L.A. is short for Laurelton. Back in okay. the days, the phone numbers used to start with L.A. If you if you had the number, right? Or like, in New York, in the Bronx, in the Bronx was M O five. Right. Yeah, so you had right. you had L.A. And even um. When the when when the welcome sign when you come into Lawton and you see the welcome signs like welcome to Springfield Gardens or welcome to Lawton, it'll say L A like L A period, not L period A period. Right. You see what I'm saying? So we adopted that name way before we even heard of the other L A posse, and right. it was not it was nothing to do with Los Angeles because we originally I was one of, I was running with a crew called Boom Bash, right? So Boom Bash, people used to say it was a gang, but it, it was more like protectors. You know, every gang started out protecting their turf, their neighborhood. So in Laurelton, we had Boom Bash, and it wasn't about guns and shooting. These brothers were physically strong. They used to go to the gym. They used to work out. They looked like a crew of bodyguards. It was like a 100 of these brothers, Supreme, Pitbull, Knockout. You know, you, you had a crew. So... When I got my record deal with uh, with Johnny Quest, me and the legendary Paul C, the label didn't want to rest in peace to Paul. Rest Paul in C. peace, absolutely. the 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 label didn't want to take on that that boom bash title because, you know, of things that were going on in the street, and they thought it was a bad for business. You know, so we switched it to L.A. Posse because it still stood for Laurelton. And our posse, you know where the posse was back then. The posse was your crew. Boom Bash was the crew. So L.A. Posse was born from Boom Bash. Laurelton, that's where L.A. stands and, 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 I, and I like to give a shout out to I Am Lynn Photography because it seemed like Lynn Photography really had some knowledge of Queens and saying that only you and Flavor Flav ever mentioned uh, at Laurelton, you know. Yeah, in yeah, the comments. yeah. Um, I also like to not forget Supreme, uh, the Photo Brothers, Lance and all of them. Oh, peoples. I, you know, I those, those are, are my peoples. peoples. You know, and um they all used to come to Disco Fever on Friday nights, the callies, and they, you know, we all had a good time. And uh, you had Encore. I ain't forget about Encore. Yeah, Encore. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and and like those were times when me and Mike and Dave ventured from the Bronx and Harlem to Queens in Brooklyn to bring the other shows out there and you know it, it, I had to sit and talk to Devon, like, listen, man, you know, we ain't trying to come out here and disrespect anybody, so in the future, you know, I like to sit incorporate on some of the shows, you know, because, you know, you had different parts of Queens, you had Queensbridge, you had Astoria, um, yeah. which is great with Baby J, you know, like, you know, you really gotta be careful, you know, of what you do when you go to different barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Getting back to you, um, and you were talking about Paul C., who, if nothing, uh, I can imagine the work low Paul C. would have done if he would have lived. You know, um, I had a conversation with Easy AD from the Cold Crush Brothers, uh, and you know, me and you talk many times about certain things, and um, I was talking to Dougie Fresh last night. We was on the phone for three and a half hours last night. And he was, because, you know, I put Dougie on. I gave Dougie his first show. I knew Dougie since he was 14, and I put Dougie on used his first shows. And same thing like the Force MCs. And I told him, you came in a generation of right after the Funky Four, but when all the Cold Crush and Fantastic was starting to buzz because Furious Five and Funky Four was gone. Sugar Hill Artists was gone. I said, you and you and the um, Force MCs, Force MCs actually changed Hip hop, y'all, y'all added a whole lot, right? To the energy of being a little younger. I also said, could you imagine if Larry Smith would have produced 
the Cold Crush Brothers or the Grand Wizard Theater on a Fantastic Five song, he said that might have changed hip hop. Because Larry mm -hmm. Smith, God rest his soul, was a hell of a producer. Yes, sir. And, and the song, especially Houdini. And rest in peace to Ecstasy, because Ecstasy was a hell of an MC. I, you got to go back and listen to some of Ecstasy's stuff that he was talking about. And yeah, he had the voice too, man. Word. He had the swag, the whole thing. He had the whole package. Word, my man. Getting to you in hip hop. Hold on. What, man? I, I love her. I want to ask you this question. You, LL, back then. Yeah. What was what was the? I want to hear from the horse's mouth, not third party, fourth party. Cause I'm older than y'all, but I heard things. What was what was the situation back then? Well, the situation with Elmy is um. This is where people get it misconstrued. A lot of people say that LL took my style and ran with it. I disagree a thousand percent. Right. What happened is. We had mutual friends. L had a friend named Cal. I had a friend named Dave Molicio. These brothers used to argue about who was better between myself and Jay Ski. Me and Jay Ski, we didn't know each other, you know, this, that, and the other. So these guys put us together to originally battle each other. So we met up at a place called Roller Castle out in Long Island, Elmont, where Flavor Flav used to host these events, Black Spectrum and all of them. So, um, Instead of battling, what, what me and L did was we just compared notes. Like, he rhymed and, and I rhymed, but it wasn't on the mic. It was just us kicking it, you know, getting to know each other. And I was impressed because of the similarity in our voice texture, our cadence. We were both young. We were both hungry. We both had that same growl. Me, I was already out. Uh, gaining popularity because of my involvement in the park jams and being with a group that is of an older generation, the clientele brothers. I was They put me in that group and I was the youngest one. So I was becoming recognized. I was the young guy though. So I didn't think that there was another young artist like me with that passion. You know what I'm saying? But see, well, put it this way, LL, he had it. He had that passion. Now, when I met him, I'm like, damn, there's two of us. You know what I'm saying? So we automatically hit it off because we were the same age. You know what I mean? Two skinny brothers, fly guys. You know what I mean? And so L started coming around the way a lot, you know, and um, we, 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 we clicked up. We were never in a group together. It was just him and I, and we used to run together. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had dealings with a crew called, it was a crew called the Sensational Five where we had ever-loving Kid Ice, lovable little B, lover boy TC, romantic lover Snow. I, I remember was, them. I was, I was Playboy Mikey D. Jay Ski changed his name to Cool J. I was the first person he told about the new name. And I was like, that's dope. So we was walking, we was probably, I was probably going to buy me a 40 or something like that. And I was like, yo, you need something in front of that name, you know, something. So we started, you know, bouncing back and forth with, with nicknames and, 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 and the ladies love slipped out, you know what I mean? And he adopted that, ladies love, Cool J, and that's where the LL came from. Now, where we started going this way is because when we were younger, I was hungry. Um, but I wasn't hungry for the success of being in the limelight, television, and making millions of dollars. That wasn't my thing. My thing was to be the dopest MC, battle anybody. I didn't have the discipline to be tamed. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cool J had it. I always tell people where Cool J is right now is where he envisioned himself being when we were young. But his dreams and my dreams were different dreams. We didn't have the same dreams and aspirations and ambitions. He had it. I didn't. I tell people, uh, like when he used to go uptown to, 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 to check out Silver Fox, you know, he used to want me to come with him, but I'd take my car fare and go to Pop and Kim's and buy me some brew. 
Because I want to say this. Hold on one second. Yeah. I, I want, and, 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 and I definitely want to say this. Ming Ming, uh, hold on for one second. Man, right. I told you, you can't make noise, baby. Take that in the room. Hold on for one second, man. I'm sorry. Come on. Okay. I'd like to shout out Scratch Master Jazzy G's in the building. Uh, Soul Science, Flow Radio. I think we got The Blaze, 94.5, The Blaze in the building. Uh, Hip Hop Fundamentals, Princess Global, uh, Tokyo, Models Detective, Verbally Deceased. Wow, real DJ Kevy Kev is in the building. So check this out. Yeah. Um, Shaw Rock and um, Grandmaster Cass had to interview uh, the other day. So with Fox from Fancy 3, that LL said, listen, I want Joe to interview him because this is the guy that I patterned my rap style after. So with mm -hmm. Fox. Mm -hmm. But LL also used to hang a lot out in Harlem a lot as well. Yeah. And he used to go to Dougie Fresh House a lot as well, growing up. Because I look at LL, and him and Mike C, is real close from the Villas. And Mike interviewed him, and they had the little inside jokes of certain, I was like, damn, I didn't know all that. Now, I told Sean Rock, I said, I'm so mad because if I'd have ran across LL back in the day, I would have caught on him, caught him, and put him on. But I think during that time, I was more down at the Roxy's uh, during Friday nights. But I didn't want to get off course because you did say Silver Fox. So we'd like to shout out to Silver Fox from Fantasy 3. He definitely played yeah. a big part of LL's uh, career. And I appreciate when brothers come out and say that this person inspired me or that person inspired me or that person did this because it's only right. Yeah, I always had the impression that you and LL was beefing. Okay. Well, we did. We, we, we did beef. And, 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 and I take full responsibility for that as a man. Like, you know, when, you, when you're young, you know, ego plays a big part. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I was, I was, I was, in, I was in them streets for real. You know what I mean? What? And I was, I, was, I was really in them streets. Like, I would go anywhere and battle. I, I didn't care where the battle was at. And so I was really gaining a reputation of what, like, nowadays people would say, oh, he, yo, he real. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't with these. It was with this. You know what I'm saying? Right. LL was a professional ll he he encountered people and he learned what he could learn from them and he would move on there's nothing wrong with taking the best elements of somebody installing it into what you're doing and becoming what you are i could still claim a piece of his greatness because i inspired some of that you know what i mean but the way things started going left is because me being in those streets and constantly hearing people say he bitch a style and ran with it, I started believing that. Like, you know, I'm drinking, so you know, you you start putting that on that battery in your back. And check this out. This is another thing. So he came out on records first, right? With I need a beat. So when he came out with I need a beat, everybody thought that was me because now hold on one else. second. Who was Kamikaze? I don't know. When he said kamikaze, take a look at what I've done. Used to rock in my bed. I don't know who he was talking about. Maybe me. Subliminal. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I doubt it. But I, I don't know who kamikaze was. But look, what I'm saying is, when he came out with I Need a Beat, everybody thought that was me. You know what I mean? Because he's a fresh artist coming out. I'm already out there park-wise and like, my name is buzzing underground in them streets. You know what I mean? So when they heard that, they thought it was me. Because like I said earlier, our cadence was similar. That's what drew me to him. That's what drew us to each other. Because we sounded so much alike. You know what I mean? And when I started making records, so I started rhyming, and you know, saying rhymes, people were telling me I sounded like him. So that bothered me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? I sound like him. So, you know, it was things like that. So I started taking shots at him on records and stuff like that. And we started going this way. People used to say, oh, he could have did this for you and did that for you. To be honest with you, he tried. When he got his first contract with Def Jam, he said we could be the next run DMC. I was the one that declined because that wasn't my thing. 
I didn't want right. to do all of that. You know what I'm saying? He had it all together then. You know what I'm saying? So who am I to blame this man for his success and me being where I am? Because technically, I was where I wanted to be. I wanted to be the dopest rapper in the hood. I exceeded those expectations. You know what I mean? So, But it took me years and years and years later when I finally stopped drinking, when I moved away from all the calamity and I got my mind right to sit back and think about all of the shit that I was doing that wasn't right. You know what I mean? And he was at the top of the list, man, where I was like, I don't care what people think no more. This man owes, I owe this man an apology. And what did I do? I apologized to him. And we've been good ever since, man, because, you know, I take re full responsibility as a man. I was wrong. Now, let That's me all that is. And, 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 and I'm glad you were having this conversation. I'm glad you're saying that. I always say, depending on your career in this business, some people get it early and they can never come back. Some people just float through it. And now you can... You, you you could be more important now than you was 20 years ago. Absolutely, like, man. I, I agree. We're going to get into the things that you're doing, and I'm watching you. Um, I like to say we're talking to the legendary Mikey D, and um, I want everybody to understand I'm working on the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, which is tw two years from now, but donations is required that make this happen because I'm not going to do it do a Netflix, them, let, let take their money, then they're going to tell you how to do it. So if you want to donate the Cash App, I pinned, I pinned the name there. Whatever whatever uh, that you can do to support, it counts. And I also, uh, and uh, it's on YouTube. But now, I, I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to divide it. Because I hate when they do this dumbness. The top... Right. Five MC, the your top ten, and I think it's unfair. Stop. That, Turn it down. That this they woman ask is a question, me. and it's not broken down by generations. Yes. Yeah. If you want to, because you can ask Jada Kiss, or you can ask Jules Santana, your ten, but he may not know the, the body of what Cas Modi or Melly Mel or whoever did. So what I'm going to do with you in that first generation, you know, and don't worry about the baby girl. I got she's killing me though because it's it's like <laughs> I got I got anxiety. She moving around. I'm trying to focus, and I'm <laughs> listen. It's all good, man. And 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 the before record generation, who would be your five? Well, to put it, this is this is how I put it. I, I put it plain and simple like this. My top five has always been based off of the top five people who inspired me and motivated me the most. That's right. it. My list will never, ever change because I base it off of inspiration. So my top five, Grandmaster Kaz, Kumo D, Eddie OJ, Will Seville, and LL Cool J. Those are my top five. Those are the five that always have inspired me the most to become who I am right now. And that list will never change. That's my bias, top five. Now, and, and everybody's entitled to their list. The reason why I break it down that way because if you don't say Tupac and Biggie, people be having like growing hairs. And like, listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Yes. And everybody should respect everybody's opinion. But I just hate when you're trying to do the top, even the top 50, and these young kids don't know about, like, you got kids that don't know Ice-T many records. That's what I'm saying. Man, these kids better check for R.J. Payne. They better check for Black right. Thought. And, they and, better and, check for them cats. They better right. stop. They better check for Loaded Lux and Mook. They better stop playing. And they better check for Tay Rock. R.J. Payne is messing with Ice-T right now, and I know I've talked to K. Slade about R.J. Payne, but K. like said he just want to spit fire. He, 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 it's, it's like it's like it's a difference between spitting fire and making records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of course it is. Absolutely. And I, I finally learned the difference. You know what I mean? That's, we'll get into that. Now, we're going to get into something happened, New Music Seminar. Okay. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Battle. 
you get in a battle, one of the greats in hip hop is there, and you go up against them and melly yep. down. Yep. And I want you to tell the world. And I'm not holding him back. But what happened when that battle came to you and him? And I want people to hear it from your mouth. Well, what happened between that Melly Mel and me was that was that was my that was my Davy versus Goliath moment in, in my travels of hip hop. Um that was one of the greatest moments of my career, one of the most shocking moments of my career. It, it just shifted a lot of things, you know what I mean? Um, like I said, I always wanted to be the best rapper on the block. I exceeded that. I became the best rapper in the borough. I became the best rapper, whatever, you know? And when I signed with Sleeping Bag Records in 1988, Ming Ming, calm down a little bit, baby. When I signed with Sleeping Bag Records in 1988, it was based Shout off of- Will Will Sokoloff, Juggy, Ron Resnick. Yes. Um, what's his name? Oh man, Virgil Simmons. Virgil Simmons. You yeah, know. Virgil, but yes. yeah, um, and Mantronics. Mantronics wanted me to get with his crew. You know what I mean? But right. my reputation was noticed at Sleeping Bag because of my battling abilities. You know what I mean? And um, so when I signed with Sleeping Bag with Paul C and Johnny Quest, they entered me into the 1988 New Music Seminar without me even knowing. You know what I mean? Okay, fine. So we went, we did whatever. So anyway, at the seminar, you know, you have to go through the preliminary rounds first. The preliminary round, they pick you up against somebody to see if you can elevate to the next level, which is the next day. That's the big arena, you know what I mean? So I had to battle my boy, Mr. X from Queens that day. And, you know, I, I won. Wasn't no disrespect to anything. It was a competition in business. Um. After that, I'm in the seminar the following day. I had to go through, I don't know, maybe 12 different MCs, you know, because they put you against, you get two rounds apiece. Like the rounds, they go through rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they start dwindling down until the last two. So the last two was me and a brother named Bango, which was super dope. And um, you, you, Ming Ming, stop, baby. So I wound up edging him and the thing with Melly Mel, what was supposed to happen was it was supposed to be a demonstration with last year's rapper and this year's rapper rapping together. You know, he, he had his belt. I just won a brand new belt. It didn't work out like that. I mean, I was all for it, you know, but Melly Mel turned it into some, some next stuff, you know. Pause. Now. I know Mel, and I'm going to say this. Instead of him saying, okay, young blood, his, the torch is passed or whatever, Mel wanted to battle you for that belt. Yeah, right? he wanted to battle. Yeah, because he felt, he felt like, how could I win the belt without Melly Mel defending his belt? How could you win a right. belt and I didn't defend my belt? You know what I mean? There you go. I wasn't with that, man, because I felt like it was a setup or some, you know, a lot of stuff was going through my mind. And I'm like, I just won this belt. I'm taking this to the hood so the hood could be proud of me. And I'm hanging this belt up and popping Kim's. You know what I mean? And, and <laughs> so Melly Mel was like, you ain't no real champion. You, you, how you a champion? You ain't no real champion. I'll battle you for both. I mean, I'll battle you for the belt. You know, winner takes both belts. I'm like, hell no. First of all, I respect Melly Mel. Second of all, I didn't trust the whole situation. And it was it just, it was like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to do this. But he kept pushing the issue. So after a while, the disrespect becomes unavoidable. You know what I'm saying? Now you're pushing my back up against the wall, and I'm not going to have any other choice but to come out and do what I do. Now you, it's like you poking the sleeping bear, man, because you don't know what I'm capable of. And this is what happened. He slams his belt on the ground. And I'm like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. But I still got things going through my mind. First of all, you got the, you know, the, the Bronx versus Queens thing. 
you got, you know, old school, new school, you know, and this year's champ, last champ, right. you know, legend, unknown. Like, it was a lot of stuff against me. So the crowd started saying, go, Mikey, go. The crowd was on my side, like, yo, go, go, go. Melly Mel doing push-ups and all this on stage, like a real wrestling dude, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, my, my man Kaz was with him, you know? But Kaz wasn't really saying anything negative or nothing. Mel was putting on the Melly Mel show, you know? And, um, man, I, I slammed my belt on top of his and said, let's go for it. Let's, I, let's go, you know what I mean? Because now I got no other choice but to fight back. You got my back up against the wall. Whatever happens from this point on, it's just going to happen. So me, I wasn't going to try to battle him with uh, – educational rhymes and you know teachable moments nah this is a battle guns is coming out i'm i'm gonna catch you off guard he's right. doing he's doing push-ups you know what i mean so i got i got real witty on him i started i started dissing him to the momentum of his push-ups had the crowd going nuts like yeah because i'm going at him because now that kumo d you know, Grandmaster Kaz, this and that heckler in the audience is coming to me now. So let me diss him. And whatever he says, it's not going to work unless he disses me. He didn't diss me. What he did was he, 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 he did some, like, the message type rhyme. Great rhyme. Dope rhyme. If, I wasn't if, here. if we based it off of rhyme for rhyme, Melly Mel would have had me. But I, I went for the throat. This was a battle. This wasn't right. teachable moment time. This was us going for blood. So that's what I use. Not to say I'm corny and I can't do teachable moments, but that wasn't the time for that. So that's where he fell victim to me. Lynn photography, Lynn photography just asked, can you say that verse from that battle? You remember it? I said, yo, Man, man, turn that down, please. It is. Pause it, because I'm going to say a rhyme for, for up to still. <laughs> you ready That's for me? Here go. Is that the verse from the battle? I said, yo, Melly Mel, don't even turn your back, because for that shit you just said, I have a counterattack. Call me scared or unprepared or anything that you can. It could be you and your crew against this one, man. I ain't running, homeboy, so don't interrupt. I'm just fulfilling my dream, shutting your ass up. You try to break on me? I thought I was your friend. You broke on me. Now you taste your own medicine. But I should give you credit where the credit is due, but fuck that. I'll give you credit when this rhyme is through. People think that you're the best and no one can be better. But I'm known to be a title upsetter. One rhyme will take you out, or maybe two, but any way that you put it, your ass is through. You pop shit like you're great. Come to parties late. When you finally arrive, you make the people wait. You ain't shit, Melly Mel be bragging about. I bet this girl right here could take your dumb ass out. When it comes down to rapping, you might be okay, but you met me, so get on your knees and pray that I don't take your title with one rhyme recital. The rap that I possess could be that vital. I hate to put you down lower than the ground, but you're always talking about you're the greatest around. That weak rap bit is illegit. Homeboy, you should quit that weak bullshit. You're the title defender, and I'm the contender. I'll let you know right now your career will end at the end of this jam. That's right, my man. Anything that you Anything that I do, you wish you can. I could turn the largest wall into a little fence. I could make your ugly ass look like a prince. Now, if I could do that, you know that I got pulled because making you look good is impossible. With a face like yours, you could scare away the devil. In a beauty contest, you're on Medusa's level. Believe it because I know what I'm talking about. You look worse than an ass with shit coming out. You poor mother. The rap is your only job on Thanksgiving. All you ate was corn on the cob. No Christmas presents when Christmas time came around. Even robbed Santa Claus when he came to your town. Let me stop snapping on you. You're a waste of my time. Keep your big mouth shut or get part two of this rhyme. Wow. And that's 88, 1988. You know what I mean? Now, let me ask you a question. Since all that happened over the years, how how your two guys' relationship? Well, we haven't spoken to each other in, in decades. You know what I mean? Um, 
I mean, like I, I went through the phase where, you know, I would, I would, I would, uh, you know, poke fun at him and stuff like that. And once again, the ego getting involved with a younger Mikey D. You know what I mean? Oh, I fuck me, me, blah, blah blah blah. Without just letting it go and and becoming a man. And um, I would say within the last two years, the relationship came awesome because I got a chance to really um kick it with him because he did a show up here in uh Middletown. I live up in Wappingers. It's about 40 minutes away upstate. So he did a show with my man Peter Wayne and Lady Miz and them. And um I got a chance to really talk to him and you know and and tell him, you know, the appreciation that I have for what he did for the culture and you know the the seminars just fought under the bridge and you know gave him a hug and I told him every time I see you I'm gonna salute you, man, because you've done so much and I've never gotten a chance to tell you how I really felt about you. You know, all of that battle stuff, that's how I felt at that time. But deeper than that, I really appreciate Melly Mel. You know what I'm saying? And I got nothing but love and respect. And, 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 he, and he took the belt, he took your belt that night too, right? Yeah, he took, Grandmaster Kaz, while I was rhyming, he handed them to them. I don't think, they expected that outcome. I think they thought I was going to be a push, a walk in the park. You know what I mean? They didn't think I was capable of the damage that I put on that night. You know, so, you know, he, to spare the embarrassment of him giving me the belts, you know, he made a big scene on his exit. So it was a memorable moment, you know, like he bullied me or stuff like that. You know, a 120 and, and, pound man against... Hulk Hogan, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to put an APB out. If anybody see those belts on eBay, because they were stolen, both of them, please let me know. Now, dude, I've been talking to you about hip-hop archival stuff. You said you had a piece of another belt? What it was was after that event took place, uh, Tom Silverman from Tommy Boy, who threw the gave you another belt, right? Yeah, he got me another belt made. I got it about three weeks later, and um, I actually took it down. I moved to Miami in, like, 89, and um, I took the belt down there with me and stuff like that, and Hurricane Andrew came through and it just destroyed a lot of stuff, including the home. The belt was in there. But one of my boys, Demi, down in Florida, he has pieces of the belt still, yeah. Which, which is important. That has to be in the hip-hop museum. Well, okay. yeah, we'll get in touch with Demi and, and, and we'll have that shipped to us, man. That'd be dope. For years, I've been trying to reach out to um, Tom Silverman just to find out where he got the belt made so I could get a replica. But no no, um, no luck with that. I, you know what? I'm, I'm interviewing Monica on Tuesday. Yeah. And I'll talk to Monica. And to let you know, my lineup on Tuesday is Monica Lynch, former president of Tommy Boy. Thursday of next week, I have Ralph Carter from Good Times along with Irving Patton, the world famous hip hop photographer, and then yeah. uh, that's that's on Thursday and Saturday, next week Saturday, I got DJ Hurricane. Ha <laughs> ha, my man, Hurricane. <laughs> now let's move forward. Over the years, I'm going to commend you. Um, for your contribution to hip hop, and Thank for being you. a gentleman, for being a gentleman, because I was at the I was at Harlem World the night that Mo D came on stage and did what he did to Busy B, and I felt sorry for Busy B that night. I mean, I really did because there was nothing like that ever seen before. Mm -hmm. But it's part of history, and that's one thing. Busy B's like, I battled Kumo D, I lost. I mean, it ain't, it's, it's nothing to say you lost to, 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 to Kumo D. Like, come on. You know, just like you with Mel, that's part of history. You didn't back down. You took the challenge and you won that belt. Right. And, and you can't erase history. Um, as we move forward, um, I know right now you have something on YouTube. You want to explain to the people what you're doing right now, which is something that a lot of people may not be aware of that you have on YouTube? Yeah, well, what I do on YouTube is I have a weekly show called The Real Mikey D History. And the history means his story. 
because I felt like, you know, for all of these years, you know, I've done thousands and thousands of interviews and, you know, the story has been consistent. You know, the, all of the players in my life have been to consistent, you know, and um, I just felt that I wanted to build my own platform. And while majority of the people that were a part of my journey are still here, I could get the people to see the face behind these stories and, and to really get to visualize the story. Ming Ming, you have to calm down, baby. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the people that were a part of my history are still active now and they're still doing things, you know, and I, and I think the, the light needs to be shined on them as well. Although it's my history, I need these players to share the histories. Like for instance, when I said that I um, got introduced to hip hop by my man, D Money. My first episode is my first rap group, which is the Grandmaster Three, D Money and Little B. And we talk about that time and there's pictures that you can see. And now you can meet D Money and we reminiscing about that. And like I said, you know, Grandmaster Kaz was one of the first people that I heard. I have an inter uh, uh, episode with Grandmaster Kaz and us talking about you know how he inspired me and what he has going on now. So things like that, like for instance, um, I took a trip with uh, Jazzy Jeff from the Funky Four Plus One. Him and I went to Detroit before to see his boy Piccolo. I met Bizarre before Bizarre was down with D12. You know what I'm wow. saying? So I just had Bizarre on my show last week and we reminisced about that. So everybody that was a part of my history that's what we're talking about. You know, I'm not bragging about what I did. We're getting to know the people that played a part in my but that's, history. But see, but see, but see, that's important. Like I said, those who were part of it that didn't get the accolades, never made the impact to say I was there is important. And, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of groups that didn't become big. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you go back, let's go back to Rayvon and Johnny Wild. Yeah, if Rayvon didn't, you know, he did from the streets. Rayvon ended up going away for years, and it lost everything that they was doing with the Magnificent Seven and everything. Yeah, and now it's being made up. Now, you know, um, I feel that I, I got this saying: I wish I was there. There's a lot of people that want to talk about it, but you wasn't there. And I say, I bet you wish you was there, you know, because we hit 50 years now of this. Yeah. They call hip hop. I'm 63 years old. Um, you got people like who hurt 67, Copa Rock is 67. Mm -hmm. Um. We have a lot of brothers that's not here no more. Mm -hmm. Like the museum open. Um, Jam Master J, uh, Chris Markey D, uh, Ecstasy, Biz Markey. You know, I mean, you can go up and down the list of just that generation. I'm not even talking about these young kids today that's getting murdered. Senseless, know? yeah. We got brothers that died because of health, and then you got those getting murdered. Like, wow. I call them the rappers. Because I oh, I said to Shaw Rock, I said to Scorpio, and I said to Dougie last night, I said, yo, the most important thing in my life is to protect the first 25 years. 73 to 98. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people after 98, that was born in the 90s, but started this in 98, don't know nothing about hip hop. No. They know nothing about the culture. Snoop came out in 92, the locks came out later on. You look at Jadakiss, Jadakiss is no, but he might say, you know, Rakim, uh, this one is my favorite, but that's respectable. But the point is they understand when they did the locks versus, he's like, listen, man, this is real here. And what I do, we look at DMX, he understood certain things. Yeah, DMX been around. But did you know did you know Cameron, that the, yeah. Cameron knew better? He knew better. But did you did you did you realize that 
the Locks' first appearance on Wax was with us. Main Source, 1994, set it off. I put Sheik and Jada on that song. Large Professor went for his solo career. I joined Main Source with the two DJs. We were working on the sophomore album. We had a you know, joint open, set it off. Right. Jada Kiss and Sheik were featured on that song before they became the, the Locks. They were the Warlocks. You know what I mean? I had Sha Queen on there and so, MC hey, what you know, hey, hey, what you know about Sha Queen? Sha Queen is actually family. Because you know she was working my boy, God bless his soul, Mighty Mike. He passed last year, cancer. Mike Logan. Yeah. And I, I introduced her to Kay Slay. Mar and she changed her name to Mar Barker. Yes. She used to she used to be with uh Coochie Rat. No her kidding. son, her oldest son. Mark, I, had to, I had to deal with that, son. No kidding. I was dealing with her before she even got with Cootie Rat. But look, check this out. Her first son, Marky, that's my cousin. That's my little cousin because okay. Marky's father is my first cousin. I introduced Sha Queen. Actually, Sha Queen, I met her in Queens through my man Felio when she was about 14. She's actually, I'm going to send you, she's coming up on one of my, my shows, uh, Husband's coming on the week after next. She's on the new case like 200. She's on the new case. She's on that. We talked about it. We talked about it. You should have told her. You should have told her about me. She was like, Van? Van Silk? Listen, I was trying to get her a deal. And uh, I forgot what happened. Uh, because um, if she would have had the right back and she, she you, she wrote a, she was no joke. She was the illest. She would take dudes' necks off. She was sexy. I mean, she's she's pretty. And she had that little tooth that made her sexy. That little chip too. And little, and little, she got a lisp. And she's right. nasty with the rhymes. <laughs> Word up, yo. Let me tell you something. When when they introduced me to her when she was very young. I went into her mother's beauty shop and I promised her, I said, if I ever, ever make it into a position where I can put your daughter on, I'm going to do that. Sure enough, a couple of years later, I went back to Farmer's Boulevard. I snatched Sha Queen up. I got permission from her moms and I brought her to Toronto. And that's where she worked with me on the main source, F What You Think album. I always keep my word, man. And like I said, she was working with my boy, Mike Logan. He passed last year cancer. Mighty Mike, uh, he came from A Street Project in Astoria. Okay. And, uh, he had Shot Queen, and uh, I was trying to get Stu Fine to sign her at Wild Pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, scary Stu, boy. And Stu, Stu knew scary. who she was from the album. Right. Hey, we got Brandon in the house. Brandon used to be around cold chilling a lot. Uh, Princess Global. Ever did yeah. Must be from Queens. Uh, let me see who else is on here. Sloppy Copies. Wow. Aha, uh -huh, that's my man King Hans. Sloppy okay. Copies. Philadelphia is in the house. Well, like I said, this is your brother Van Silk. I'm sitting up here with my brother Mikey D. We're having a conversation. Let's talk with Van Silk Hip Hop. And... Uh, I do things a little different, man. And I don't, I don't sit up here and just talk about the Bronx. I talk about everything in general. We go outside the box uh, and what we discuss. Um, you know, when you say Lars Professor, main source, yeah. what's, your, what's your relationship with Nas? I don't, I, don't, I don't have a relationship with Nas. Nas, I don't... I don't know him personally. You know, I've heard a lot about him. I mean, I know who he is, of course, but prior to the success, I've heard a lot but about he know him. Who you sure. are. He know who you are. Well, I'm from Queens, man. I'm I'm one of the one of the OGs of Queens, you know. But um Nas, yeah, I got nothing but respect for him, man. Always have, man. Always how have. About, how about and you? I love to meet him personally, man. But how about you and my crazy son? He called me his nigga stepson, Shan. <laughs> That's my dude. <laughs> yeah. 
Taiwan is my brother. That's my brother. He said Taiwan is his father. I'm his nigga father. I'm his nigga father. Yeah. <laughs> his father. Yeah. Shan is my brother. That's my brother. I swear to God for life, man. I love Shan to death, man. You know, February 26th, uh, for those who might want to make it, is on my Facebook page. Um, friends of mine out of Philly, and uh, friend of mine's out of uh, North County, out of Charlotte. You know, this is a tournament called Seattle yeah, Double A Weekend. They used to do it down in Charlotte, but now it's going to be in Baltimore, Maryland this year. Yeah. And uh, they have a tribute. Nobody forgets the biz, which is going to be a foundation that started for his diabetes. And it's going to be at the M&T Bank Stadium where the Ravens play. So they got the whole lounge. Big Daddy Kane is going to be there. It's a day party from 2 to 8. Shantae, Cool B, I'm going. Um, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to need a video drop for, from you as well. But it's going to be right. in Baltimore. I just spoke to, when I spoke to Dougie Fresh last night, I think he's doing another party. They're doing another party. But it's a whole weekend of CIAA because they have basketball games. You know, it's alum alumni's come. Um, I think they moved it out in Charlotte because a couple of these shootings. Young Dolph got was a shootout when he got shot in Charlotte at the CIAA weekend. Rest in peace, young Dolph. Word. Uh, but I'm just saying, uh, if anybody want to go to that, the, the, the website is Nobody Forgets the Biz. I'll post the link in there. Tickets are on sale. CIW weekend, February 25th and 6th down in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so the thing that you're doing on YouTube, uh, now you're creating your own contents now. Are you, and you have to have over a thousand subscribers in order to start monetizing that. So well, actually, you have to have um, over a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time. Right. Or, so yeah, that's yeah. the goal that I'm trying to get to now. I'm not three thousand one hundred. How many? Or, or how many viewers you got? I mean, how many views of? Uh, it's hours of views. Four thousand hours of views. I think it is. It's it's four thousand wa watched hours. So you yeah, know, watch hours. Yeah, watched hours. So I'm at three thousand one hundred and seventy nine right now. So when I so, started my when I started my my new YouTube page, I'm at now I'm at uh, hitting six thousand followers. But this last month I was only at four. Yeah. So like every day I'm like I'm getting like ten to twenty subscribers a day or or, or like every two hours it's like thirty subscribers and, and I'm not really putting a lot of content up, but they're going back visiting old content that I had put up. Yes, so and I'm that counts. My that stuff. Counts. And um, and I think it's a great thing on monetizing your product and your content because that's needed for your, you know, your generation. Like everything that I do on Facebook, every video, I give it. If I'm talking about even this stuff right here, all this stuff is being left to my grandkids. Like this is my content. You know, I save it. You know, mm -hmm. because it's important. Like this conversation, 25 years from now, is gonna be very important. Absolutely, you know I mean? man. So now, uh, what's, what are you doing now besides that? Is, is, I, I know some people who still want to go in the studio, record songs. Uh, is that something that you, you, you in, you're doing, interesting doing, or are you just basically going day by day? Not, well, with me, the, 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 the music, the creative process of it all is, is my first love. It's my therapy. It's my everything. And again, I have something to prove now. Like before, it was when I was younger, it was me proving that I was dope and I needed that respect. Now, what I have to prove is I can make some real dope records too. You know what I mean? And yeah, because my, you know so funny. You ain't got to prove you're a dope MC no more. That ain't that. Yeah, that. But, but what I'm saying is, back then, when I was the younger Mikey D, that was my yeah. goal. And like I said, I exceeded all expectations of that. Now, even, because even when I was making records, that wasn't really what the goal was. Like, I never reached for a hit record. I always wanted to just rhyme a record out and just get busy on it. You know what I mean? Now, I'm mature. Now I appreciate life. Now my mind is expanded. You know, I mean, I'm not, 
I'm still hungry lyrically, but I want to make some music that everybody in every age group can vibe to. Like when I listen to my instrumentals, of, I'm, I'm working on an album right now, now called Reignited. The reason I call it Reignited is because I got this new energy, man, and it's so good. This energy is so positive and I want to share it with everybody. So like when I go to pick my niece up, this little girl right here, and I play my instrumentals and, and I'm, I'm practicing, but she is vibing, not just because I'm Mikey D, I'm her uncle, it's because this music that I'm gonna bring forth is a whole new, ah, everybody can love it, man. Like Jay says, man, this talent doesn't have any deadlines, bro. No, 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 no expiration dates. I, 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 as a brother out of Virginia, I, I can't get his name, man. Uh, another underdog, but a great MC. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, VA. He was down. They had an album called Consequences. Uh, he's a oh, ghost. You talking about, um? oh, snap. That, he used to do the, the, the wrap ups. Oh, God. He's, he's VA. Like, yeah, out of Virginia, where Missy and all them come from. Like, yeah. He, he used you know to the, MC. The, the yearly wrap-ups, right? Yeah, he was writing, too. You know the MC. What's his name? He never had a hit, but he was just dope. Boy, I was, can't think of his name right now. But it's going to come to me. Not cons I know who you're talking about. It's at the tip of my tongue. He was just, he, he was on YouTube. Oh, my God. He was on Drink Camps, right? Drink Camps. He was on Drink Camps. He was talking about Uncle Murder. You talking about, uh. He was just on Drink Champs with Norby. <laughs> Yo, I know who you're talking about. <sighs> oh, snap, man. But but hold on. And then I told you to holler at K Slate now. Because now you know, he just dropped a song with Snoop Too Short and Papoose and somebody else. Um, You got, yo, dude, you, you got the phone number. Yeah. You got it. Well, hey. I, man, listen, I don't want to be a pest, man. Whatever K Slate got going on, I would love to be a part of, man. I got nothing but love and respect for that brother. Even if you got a joint, like, okay, I need you to say something on here. That's all you got to do. You got the pass from me. I already gave you the pass when I put you on this 200, brother. Just don't Oh, know my man 40 people. Killer. My man Mark the 40 Killer just texted me, and he said, we talking about mad skills. Mad skills. <laughs> Thank you, 40 Killer. That's my man. You and mad skills need to do something together. Oh, I'd love to, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I love him, man. He's dope. He's really dope, man. Word, word. And speaking of speaking of the joint in Baltimore, man, I got to let Cannabis know because Cannabis is out there in Baltimore, man. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah, I talk to him all the time. You know, we got the joint together, too. I need to get in touch with him. I definitely have to have a conversation with him as well. Um, all right, I'll link that. I always I'll link thought that. that he never had the right promotion. I thought he was more like Nas. I just don't get dope beats. The tracks to certain artists make a lot of sense. If you're lyrically yeah. inclined, you say so much, you bog the people down. There's always a great saying, you got to make records for the women. No matter how you do. You got to make records for the women. If they Yo, food, listen, wherever the women are, the men are going to follow, man. Like, you can make a, you can make a dope-ass song that the street brothers are like, but the women got to shake their ass to it. You know? Like, it's out there. Right. Like, I was a big Dipset fan with, you right. know, with the whole era when K Slay was putting out Diplomat 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and Cam was dropping joints, Drew was dropping this. And I loved it. And then the locks. But I'm just saying, the whole pink and purple and all that, I mean, those were good, those were good street records. And like, I look at it. Now, I ain't saying Jim Jones is the most, the, the, most lyrical person ever, but Jim Jones has had some nice records. Like, just the way he flowed, because you go in the studio. Right. Like say, you and Mass Skills and Cannabis? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Three the hard way, baby. That'd be it. Yeah. I could see that. You know? But um, I want to wrap this up. All right. I'm so I'm glad I'm so uh, I, I made it for a whole hour, man. I've been in the bed like all day. I mean, I went to the store and uh, played my Mega Millions. <laughs> uh, no doubt, man. Look, I'm mellow. As, 
I'm mellow yellow right now. I've been drinking this CBD, baby. Really? Well, I got this water here. I got to drink the average of eight bottles of water to keep my white cells up. All right. All right. Now, this CBD but, um, is pretty I, good. I like to say any last words you'd like to say to your friends, your people uh, out here, the followers, the stage is yours. Yo, I definitely want to thank everybody for the continued support, you know, after after 40 years of this hip hop thing with me, baby. Um, I definitely want to shout you out, big bro, because you always, you always, you know, guide me in the right direction, man. With K Slay, even with the alley oop with this right here, man. You know what I mean? It's because of you. On the metals. That's right. I, I gotta love Larry and shout out to Nadine. Word up. Um, yeah, definitely check out the real Mikey D on YouTube, so y'all can check out the 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 docu series. It's pretty dope. Um, listen out for the new music. Reignited. It's, it's it's gonna be coming. I'm working on it. I have a dope producer named Kemp. He's out of Germany. The music is gonna be so dope. You're gonna feel it in your soul. You're gonna wanna dance. You're gonna wanna sing. You don't vibe with me, man. It's, it's mature Mikey D. I can't go back in time and bring back that 17-year-old, you know, aggressive, hungry Mikey D, but I can present to you the mature Michael Deering, Mr. Deering. Make sure you text, make sure you text me the YouTube links. So I can put it in the post. Oh, I will definitely do that, man. Yeah, Actually. Yeah, you know me. I like, I like to be precise with my posts when I, when I put them up. But I want to thank everybody that's listening and then thank everybody that's going to watch it later on you know yeah this is actually this. yeah every every sunday at 7 p.m tomorrow's episode large professor next week we got yeah that's right we got it's main source to, um next week the week after that is my Barker, and the week after that lot picasso and we're gonna keep them coming you, and you can you can you can backtrack because i think we up to episode 10 now so there's a bunch of them out there and you're gonna love it. I hope well, you, you love well, it. I'm you, doing well, my own editing. Shout out to Cal Cutter because he's the camera guy. You gotta respect well, you, the shooter. You episode five here as a, as a reboot of this here. So you episode five. Oh, dope. All right. You know Pete Nice was episode two. That's my Steve man. Steve Third base. Three. We got all the flight. He was four. I had to delete some episode because I think I said things on there that wasn't supposed to be acknowledgeable to people yet. That ain't happened yet. So we Yeah, 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 it. yeah. I get it. I get it. Totally understand. But I really appreciate you being on here. And um, I really appreciate... Uh, the kids got me something. Okay. I really appreciate the time that we just spent having this conversation. Yes, sir. And, um... I want everybody to understand uh, today is Saturday. So Tuesday, 7 p.m., I have Monica Lynch from Tommy Boy Records. We will have a great discussion. And um, we're going to talk about her time being at Tommy Boy, dealing with the Force MCs, Wu-Tang, De La Soul. And, and don't else? forget to ask about that belt. Yeah, the belt. We're going to talk about the belt and also uh, the songs that came out through Tommy Boy, the legacy. And Monica was there and everything. So on that note, my brother Mikey D, this is your brother Van Silk. Salute. We salute each other out. And I'm going to do, I ain't going to mess up like I did the other day. I forgot. I, I saved it and didn't go all the way and it disappeared. So I got to go save it, save it, save it now. So all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, peace and blessings. I love you, bro. Word up. Same here, baby boy. One love. Thank you very much.